Hello. Hello. Marinig ako, guys. Hello. Okay. So you are. All right. So good evening. To you. Okay, good evening. So as an introduction lang or parang let us say disclaimer. <laughs> so this lesson is I, I go live to share also the topic to those who are not English majors or English students. So maybe this is of course this will also help other students or other college students. Anyway, so good evening guys. This lesson is or this video or live lesson is intended for my English major students, okay? So, well, this topic is lesson one in term two, week one, term two, week one, lesson one. All right, so let me know who are there. You can write your comment. I will see it here. You can say something. Good evening, everyone. Our topic tonight will be human speech mechanism on organs of speech. So this lesson or this subject is introduction to linguistics. Okay, so we need to understand the human mechanism and the organs of speech because, of course, uh, without the organs of speech, how can we have the speech? We cannot have, uh, we cannot speak. Okay, well, anyway, so I have... Uh, I think 30 plus slides, okay, for the human speech mechanism and, or and organs of speech. All right, so without further ado, let me start, guys. My live man or hindi, so as soon as you watch this video, please, or I mean, if you hear the question, please write or comment your answer, okay? Automatically comment your answer. Okay, so let's go, guys. Uh, wait lang. Let me check kasi baka mamaya wala tayong boses. Okay. There you are. I just want to make it sure na okay yung presentation ko. I just hope no problem with my presentation. And I just hope clear sa mga sa screen niyo. Sorry. All right, guys. So I think we're ready. I have two students there. Let me know if you're there. All right. Okay. So again, once again, human speech mechanism and organs of speech. Oh, you shall not proceed. Okay. So let's have first the origin of language. What's the origin of language? So language originates in the brain, of course. So that's the center of everything in our body or our activity. So language originates in the brain. So the human body does not possess any special organ exclusively dedicated to act of speaking. No, of course. Okay. So it comes from the brain. So again, there is no human body does not possess any special organ exclusively dedicated to the act of speaking. So a combination of organs used for other purposes also serve as organs of speech. So what are the parts of the human body? What are the parts of us that are working when we are speaking? So of course, right now, the mouth, the upper lip, the lower lip, the tongue, the teeth, the lungs, so... The larynx, the pharynx, the esophagus, the epiglottis, those are the parts of, of, I mean, the organs of speech. So a combination of organs used for other purposes also serves as organs of speech. Okay. Then the term organs. The term organs of speech is used in the sense of the organs which are active directly or indirectly in the process of speech production. So we have these parts of, we have this organ or, or speech organ that is directly part, or I mean that are directly part 
and there are parts of our uh, i mean parts also that are indirectly uh part in the process of speech production okay phonetics and phonology we always hear these words phonetic and phonology so phonetics is the study of speech okay the speech sounds in a human language system again let us see the difference between the phonetic and the phonology again phonetic is wait lang guys wait lang po i just give i will just get my water Okay, sorry for that. <laughs> so, ito yung problema sa live, no? Hindi natin makat. <laughs> okay, so phonetics and phonology. So, let us see the difference, okay? Let us not be confused with these words, the phonetic and phonology. What does it mean? What do we mean by this, I mean? So, phonetic is the study of speech sounds in a human language system. The speech sound. Why phonology? Take note of logy there. Phonology is the study of the selection of patterns of sounds in a single language. So it is the study of the way speech sounds combined to make meaningful signs or words in a specific language. Okay? So as you can see, the phonetic is the study of speech sound in a human language system. Phonology, phonology is the study of selection selection and patterns of sound okay what's the pattern of sounds in a single language okay so speech mechanism what do we mean by this what's speech mechanism so mechanism of speech is composed of four processes so language processing content of an adherence is converted into phonemic symbols in the brain's language center and then generation of motor commands to the vocal organs in the brain's motor center. And an articulatory movement for the production of speech by the vocal organs based on these motor commands. And emissions of air sent from the lungs in the form of speech. When we speak, we need an amount or a certain amount of air also. So the lungs is part of the speech mechanism so branches of phonetics the study of phonetics can be divided into articulatory articulatory acoustic and auditory phonetics articulatory phonetic means or deals with the production of speech sounds by the human speech mechanism acoustic phonetic is about the transmission of sound and sound waves okay the, the the acoustic and then the auditory phonetics deals with the reception and perception of sounds and hearing so these are the branches of phonetics again the articulatory phonetics it deals with the of course how you produce the sound okay and then when we say acoustic phonetic this is the transmission the transmission of sound and sound waves from one speaker to another or to the listener and then auditory phonetics as deals with the reception and perception of sounds and hearing so ako na ito ngayon for example if you're going to if i hear you talking or speaking or singing and then what's my, my the way i receive it and how i perceive it okay so that's the auditory phonetics all right so the human speech organs so we have speech functions can be described with reference to three systems in human body so we have the respiratory system we have the phonatory system and we have the articulatory system again their speech functions can be described with re reference to three system in the human body so of course respiratory system has something to do with our speech phonatory what are this articulatory system what are this okay so let's go on 
So to describe sounds, we need to consider for us to describe the sound or the human sound to be specific, we need to consider these things. The airstream mechanism. The airstream mechanism. Okay. The action of the vocal folds. Okay. The action of the vocal folds. And then the position of the soft palate. Disposition of the move of the movable organs of the mouth. So there are things to consider. How much amount of air is being released? How much amount of air is needed when we are going to produce the b, uh, okay? Just like the ah. Uh. So you have the formation of the organs of speech when you're going to say ah, uh, okay? The ah, uh. so you have to open your mouth wide and you have to bring out that amount of air. And what's the position of the tongue? So these are the things that we are going to consider. And there, there are also sounds that we produce this sound. In producing such sound, we need our nasal cavity, okay? Without, uh, we can produce this sound without opening our mouth. For example, the, mm, uh, the, mm, walang hangin lumalabas sa bunganga. Andon siya sa nasal cavity. Doon siya sa nose, okay? When you are going to pronounce the N, the N, walang, walang air lumabas sa bunganga. N, mm, mm. Dito siya sa nose, okay? Nasal. So those are the things that we are going to consider. So the phonatory system. Let's have first the phonatory system. What do we mean by this? What's phonatory system? And what are the organs? under this system. So this is composed of the larynx and the vocal cords or vocal folds. So phonatory, ito na talaga yung, ito talaga yun silang parang, they're there just to help us produce the sound for the phone, okay, the sound phonatory system. Larynx in the throat is a muscular structure in the upper part of the trachea, which contains a pair of muscular bonds or folds called the vocal cords. And then these are placed horizontally from front to back, joined at the front but separated at the back. The space between the cords is called the clotis. Okay, guys. Medyo, uh, text muna tayo ngayon, but the next lesson will be, I will show you a video and a picture, illustration of these things, okay? Especially yung pagdaan ng hangin, okay? And then the movement of the vocal cords. I'll show you that So during our lesson on Tuesday. All right. So we have the human speech organ. So we have the nasal cavity here, the nasal cavity. We have the oral cavity, oral. We have the larynx. We have the windpipe, the bronchi, the heart, and the lungs. All right, so the human speech organs. Don't worry about this, guys. We'll have colored illustration on this thing. All right, so I'm just giving you the introduction or the, or the overview of the human mechanism. But actually, we will go deeper to each of them. So that will be during our uh, lesson two and lesson three. So we have the soft palate. So when we say soft palate, move your tongue so roof ng mouth ninyo, and then move backward. The bothers the the that's that is soft, okay? Uh, so nila. So when we say soft palate, so uh, Move your tongue, so at the back of your the roof of your mouth, and then do on sa may huli banda. That is soft palate, okay? And then dito sa gitna, roof roof ng bunga ng mo. That's hard palate okay so they are parts or they are human i mean organs of speech Bakit? so they work a lot because especially but the body of the tongue touches the roof or uh the back of your tongue touches the soft palate so you can produce the sound so that is of course included or part of it all right so let's go back to the presentation Next, so we have the, the tongue, of course, the upper lip and the lower lip. We have the, the jaw, okay. So the diaphragm, yung, yung floor ng ano natin, or the roof of the stomach or the floor of the lung. Siya yung base dyan sa lungs natin, 
Okay, so these are the human speech organs. Guys, kung niyo siya clear, don't worry kasi uh, on our, during our lesson two, we will go specific, I mean, we will go deeper to the human speech organs for better understanding. Ano talaga yung process ng, ng pag-produce ng sound, okay? So let's go to the respiratory system. So when we say respiratory system, what comes to our mind is, of course, the lungs. Yes, the lungs play a very important role in the speech mechanism. So the lungs, the muscles of the chest and the windpipe or trachea provide the air stream or energy used to produce speech. So this air stream is known as pulmonic aggressive air stream mechanism. mechanism. So other organs such as the glottis and the volume can also provide an air stream mechanism. So a number of Af Africa, African and South American languages use their air streams for the production of certain sounds in their language. So... Sandy uses the glutalic air stream. Iba, iba. Okay, di ba? Minsan, or para bang, or iba talaga yung accent nila. Okay. So, the larynx and the vocal cords. You have the nasal cavity, oral cavity, pharynx, the larynx. Okay, there, the larynx there. And then the vocal cords. Okay, don't worry, guys. Drawing lang yan. I'll show you the video and the pictures or the real pictures of the vocal cords. All right. The position of the vocal cords. So when we breathe in and out, the glottis is open. So the vocal cords are drawn wide apart. Kaya kung maari, if we are eating, do not talk too much. Because when you're eating, of course, you're chewing food and then your your glottis, it opens, it uh, closes. So the tendency... <coughs> Okay, that's the tendency because you're talking and then you're eating. That is really something that you can do together in a prolonged period of time or parang uh, too much talking when you're eating. Okay, so careful. When we produce speech sounds with the vocal cords drawn apart, such sounds are called breathe or voiceless sounds. So we have the p. Okay, wait lang guys. Let me have this one. We have the p. What is that? Wait lang. Balik natin. Uh, we have the voice. Okay, when you when we say voiceless, guys, just like touch your touch your throat. Okay, you may touch your throat. And then when it vibrates, it is voiced. Kapag walang vibration, that is voiceless. Try this one. G. Okay, try to say g. Okay, produce the sound of the g. G. Okay, so there is a vibration. So that is voice. Try to say s. Letter s. There is no vibration, right? So that is voiceless. Though you hear it <laughs> because it's s. But what we mean in the speech mechanism of voice and voiceless is that. Dito. Okay? Balik tayo sa presentation. Uh, okay. Again, when we produce speech sounds with the vocal cords, okay, yung tinawag natin voiceless or voiced kasi when we produce it from the vocal cords, so if it vibrates, so it's voiced, and then if it, uh, I mean, kung pag walang, walang vibration, so it's just a breathing or lalabas lang yung hangin. So that's, those are voiceless sounds. The p, t, k, f, ch. O diba? There is no vibration there. So these are voiceless. Okay, voiced sounds. If the vocal cords are held loosely together, the pressure of the air coming from the lungs makes them vibrate. Oh, yan na yung sinabi ko kanina. So this a vibration produces a musical note called voice. So all vowel sounds and consonants like b, d, g are voiced sounds. So how are you going to tell if it's a voice sound? So makita mo siya. I sorry, hindi ko pala na share, guys. I'm sorry. Hindi ko na share yung screen. <laughs> okay, sorry for that. Okay, there you go. Okay, balik tayo. 
Okay, so let's go to the voice sounds again. So if the voice, the vocal cords are held loosely together, then the pressure of the air coming from the lungs makes them vibrate. So this vibration produces a musical co note called voice. All right, so share <laughs> what's wrong okay there you are all right there you are that all so so this vibration produces a musical uh musical note called voice so all vowel sounds and consonants like b d g are voice sounds so as you hold them it vibrates here. Robir, Rosales, Jean, Arombo, Jean, Arombo, hello. <laughs> okay, so let's continue. Frequency and pitch. So the number of times the vocal cords open and close in one second is known as the frequency of vibration. This determines the pitch of the voice. Again, guys, ulitin natin. Let's make it clear. The number of times the vocal cords open and close in one second is known as the frequency of vibration. This determines the pitch of the voice, okay? And then the higher the frequency of vibration, the higher is the pitch, all right? So frequency is a physical measurement while pitch refers to the perception of the listener then speech change is important because it forms the basis of intonation and tone all right the articulatory system so let's go to the third system the articulatory system roof of the mouth as i told you a while ago we have the hard palate and we have the soft palate the nasal cavity, the oral cavity, the pharyngeal cavity, the tongue, the larynx, the back wall of the pharynx. Okay. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, stay put because I have to ask you something that you comment niyo. Okay? Later. The articulatory system. So, alveolar ridge. Ano yung alveolar ridge? This is right after, uh, at the back of your upper teeth. Okay? At the back. At the back of your upper teeth, yan. Yung matigis, matigas na part dyan. Upper lip, lower lip teeth, hard palate, soft palate, ovula, back, tongue, middle, dorsum, front blade, tip, apex, and glottis. We mean tongue here. Okay? Yan. Then, articulatory system again is contained in the head and throat above the larynx. It is also known as the supraglottal vocal tract. In the articulation of speech sounds, we can divide the speech organs into three parts. Resonating cavities or chambers such as oral, nasal, and pharyngeal. And then the articulators such as the lower lip, the tongue, the ovula, and the lower jaw. These are called active articulators as they can move and take up positions which affect the quality of sounds produced. And then the points of articulation such as the upper lip, the upper teeth, the alveolar ridge, the hard palate, and the vellum or the soft palate. These are called passive articulators. Okay. So the pharynx, guys, the nose and the mouth, including the tongue, the teeth and the roof of the mouth and the lips form the articulatory system, okay? So the pharynx extends from the top of the larynx to the root of the tongue. And then the hindermost part of the tongue, which lies opposite to it, and the muscle of the pharynx can modify the shape and size of the pharyngeal cavity by contracting or expanding it. Uh, expanding it can also be modified by the movement of the back of the tongue by the position of the soft palate and the raising and lowering of the larynx and each modification affects the quality of the sound we produce yes so it depends on the position you know the position of the lips the position of the tongues 
change a uh, change okay and the position of the tongue change according to or based sa uh, sound that you are producing then the lips so lips where uh, which are in front most position of the oral tract play an important role of course in the production of speech sounds Okay, example for articulation of PBM, lips are tightly shut and air is released suddenly. Without the lips, you cannot uh, produce the sound of P, B, and M. He, he, he. Okay, try to produce the P, B, and M without closing or without touching your lips. Can you do that? Of course not. So the sound of the P and the B and the M okay are produced okay are produced by closing your lips so you just block the air you a sudden blocking of the air and then release it all right so lips assume different positions so spread neutral or rounded for articulation of different vowel sounds my mga tao when they talk move na move talaga yung lips just like me hindi mo, hindi mo talaga maiwasan okay and may mga tao din na even how uh, how much sounds they release already pero parang hindi pa rin nagmo-move yung lips okay basta at least andon pa rin yung closing of the lips and opening of the lips for you to produce the, the sound okay the teeth and the teeth reach some consonants are produced with the help of our teeth Example, the initial consonant sounds in the English word think and that, th, th, think and that are produced by placing the, teeth, the tip of the tongue between the upper teeth and the lower teeth. So say think, th, think, look at this, the tip of your tongue, think that, okay. So because of the teeth, you may be able to produce the th, th, all right. So the initial consonants in the English words fan and van are produced by placing the upper teeth very lightly on the lower lip. Oh. Look at the upper lip. Okay, the upper lip and then placing the upper, I mean the upper teeth, very uh, placing closely to the lower lip. <laughs> <laughs> And then, okay, so the upper teeth, of course, touches the lower lip, okay, for you to produce the V and the V, and V, okay. The roof of the mouth, the alveolar, I mean the alve I mean the hard palate and the soft palate. The roof of the mouth can be divided into three parts. The hard convex surface just behind the upper teeth front teeth called the teeth ridge or the alveolar ridge Ito, at the back of your teeth upper teeth the hard convey conve, concave surface called the hard palate yang sa gitna roof of the mouth and the soft palate or the velum at the back portion if you observe it's soft then the teeth ridge the teeth ridge or the alveolar ridge is the convex part of the roof of the mouth lying just behind the upper teeth and consonant sounds as the initial sound in the English words top and trill. By making a firm contract, contact at the teeth ridge by the tip of the tongue and releasing the closure suddenly. Okay, and then the hard and the soft palate. This is the hard bony surface which can feel if we move our tongue from the alveolar ridge along the roof of the mouth and some sounds such as the initial sound in the English word yes are produced at the hard palate okay so the as I told you earlier the position of the lips or I mean the tongue changes okay depending on the sound you produce the soft palate or volume if we move our tongue along the roof of the tongue it cannot go beyond the roof of the mouth where the bony structure ends and the roof of the mouth becomes soft. So this soft portion of the roof of the mouth is known as the soft palate or the volume.
Okay. Tinuro ko na yan sa inyo kanina. Okay. The oral sounds. What's oral sounds, guys? The soft palate can be raised to create a valley closure or lowered to open a passage. So when it is raised, the nasal pas passage is closed so that no air can escape through the nose. And it can escape only through the mouth. The sounds produced in this way are called oral sounds. Yung mga sounds na are produced, yung air lumalabas sa bunganga, hindi sa ilong, we produce them even we close our nose. Ano yung sounds na, na lumalabas? Okay, na lumabas na perfect, na ganun, na hindi nasisira yung sound niya. When we close our nose, those are the oral sounds. Okay? Let's proceed. The nasal sounds naman, when the vellum or lower the air escapes through the nose in two possible ways, it can pass through the nose only or it can pass through the nose and the mouth. So the, you cannot produce the M and U mm because uh, without, I mean, if you are going to close your nose because these are nasals, the air will come out through the nose. So if you are going to close your nose, you are not. You cannot create a sound. You cannot produce the M, the N, and the M. Mm. All right. So next, the ovula, the ovula at the end of the soft palate, there is a small pendant like fleshy tongue called ovula. So the back of the tongue can make contact with the ovula for the production of sounds such as the initial sound and the or the words carib and cow. Uh, guys, I had a student before, yung ovula niya guys, naka-split. So dalawa yung ovula, yung parang bell niya dyan sa bunga, dalawa. Nun yung buoses niya parang duwende. So I, uh, I can say na yung ovula natin is, of course, it plays a very important role uh, in, uh, I mean, kung anong boses meron tayo. So, the tongue, this is the most flexible of the organs of speech. It can assume different shapes and take up different positions, which are significant in speech production and can be divided into three parts for convenience of description. Okay. And then, parts of the tongue, the blade, the part of the tongue opposite to uh, the teeth reach when the speech organs are at rest. Its extreme end is called the tip. So front part, opposite hard palate, back part, yung tang natin, the soft palate, the root part attached to, to mouth at the back. The mouth, okay, never mind. <laughs> the shape of the mouth determines the quality of the most of our speech sounds. Okay, never mind, we know that. Then... All right, active. Okay, this one. The active and passive articulators. When we say what do we mean by active and what do we mean by passive articulators? So active articulators are those organs of speech that can move and passive articulators are those which are fixed. So yung organ, yung active articulator, of course, the best example of that is our tongue. The tongue, the lower jaw are active articulators. The upper jaw, the teeth ridge are fixed and passive. They do not move. The vellum acts as both active and passive articulators. All right. So articulatory movement in the production of speech sounds. The active articulator move from their position of rest towards the passive articulators. So example, in the production of the t, d, s, n. Mm, Sounds the tip and blade of the tongue move from their position of rest to articulate against the teeth reach. Okay. Bago ako mag-proceed, guys, allow me to ask this question. Kindly comment, boys. Sa mga boys, kindly comment. Uh, voice. Voice. Sa, uh, voice. Sound. Okay. Girls, kindly comment. Three voiceless sounds o oh, ano yun boys paki comment ng three voiced sounds and then girls paki comment ng three voiceless sounds all right so i just want to make it sure that you are uh with me with this my live man or my recorded or kahit later part na the most important thing is going to 
listen to the lesson. All right. Okay, so that's the question. And for your, for your, what's this? For your assignment, uh, please search, okay, three, the organs of speech chart. Number one, organs of speech chart. Number two is, wag na i-comment ito, guys. I will just tell you saan ito i-submit. Number two is the consonant chart. I, I mean, the, anong tawag natin dito? Yes, the consonant chart and the vowel chart. Okay, so three charts po, the organs of speech, and then the consonant, and then the vowel. Okay, so meron tayo yung stop lossives, meron tayo ng fricatives, yung chart na ganon. Okay, the point of articulations. So please, saan nyo siya i-save doon sa Google Classroom? Doon sa folder ninyo sa Google Classroom. Doon submit guys. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for that. That's number one, uh, I mean, requirement for the second week. Thank you so much. And uh, once again, oh, I will see you again tomorrow or Tuesday for our lesson two. All right. So, guys, thank you. And I'll see you mon on Monday or Tuesday. Bye-bye.